Hello. Not so long ago, I had a chance to talk about human rights or uh, droit de personne uh, in the Civil Code of Quebec. And th these are the like rights of persons. It englobes a little bit more than just a uh, regular notion of human rights. But still, uh, in English version, uh, the Code and the Quebec Charter uh, still use the word human rights. Uh, and I was talking about the limits, because nowadays, and probably not only nowadays, uh, many people are concentrated on rights, the, the rights they have, uh, with a tendency to uh, take them as something absolute and granted and so forth. Uh, but in reality, those rights are limited. So what are we talking about? Uh, human rights, rights of persons, individual rights, uh, and it's like wide perception. They include those rights guaranteed by the Canadian Charter, uh, in Quebec those by guaranteed also uh, by the Quebec Charter, and those mentioned in the, of course, uh, Civil Code of Quebec. And uh, even the right to exercise civil rights as itself is also a right, which is considered to be a right of a person, a personal right, uh, or human right in that sense. And uh, when we look at this list, uh, it's, all, it's all great, it's all fabulous, uh, it, it makes us proud that we have those rights, but... Uh, the same documents usually stipulate that the rights should be exercised to the extent, to the extent provided by law. They should be exercised in good faith, meaning that they should not be used to harm somebody else, and they should not be used in a so-called excessive and unreasonable manner, uh, meaning that even if you have a right, but you don't have a like, particular <laughs> need to use that right, but you still use it to make somebody else's life miserable. That's not an exercise of the right in good faith. Also, uh, and that's a big part, uh, rights contradict each other. So at any moment, uh, a reasonable person like you and me should think like what would be a proper balance and if we cannot find this proper balance, eventually it might go to court, so the judge would find a proper balance. So, as you can see, even though we're talking about rights, fundamental rights, constitutional rights, civil rights, human rights, they're not absolute. They're, they have caveats, they're, they're carved against each other, uh, and... Uh, even if we're absolutely sure that at any particular moment we, we have a right uh, to do this and that, it might be that the situation is not as optimistic as it might look. Uh, for example, uh, one of the most fundamental right, or freedom of, of expression, yeah, freedom of speech. Still, you know that there are limitations on hate speech, there are limitations on discrimination, for example. There are limitations on where and how can you express your opinion. And when it comes to a situation of defamation, for example, uh, there is a right to balance against it. There's, there's, uh, the right for to privacy, to dignity, to reputation, which is both in the Civil Code and the Quebec Charter, for example. So, uh, at the end of the day, you might find out that this freedom of expression, freedom of speech is only protected if it has uh, public value, if it's in the interest of the society at large. And then there will be a question, like, what kind of speech is of public value? Uh, in the interest of the society at large. 
if you're a politician and you're talking in a clearly political context, well, maybe. If you're a journalist and you're writing in a, a clearly journalistic context, maybe, maybe not when it comes to uh, social media, for example, that there are situations already. When you're gossiping about somebody, when you're just sharing some personal information, maybe truthful, yes, but still harmful to somebody else, it might be not protected already. Uh, when it comes to even as fundamental as personal security and freedom, still it's limited by criminal laws, criminal rules, penal rules. There are a lot of things that mm, might be punished through some violation or a limitation of this right to personal security uh, and freedom. And that, for example, peaceful enjoyment, as you know, in reality, there are, there are limits. There are governmental limits, there are municipal limits. Uh, most of them, not all of them, but most of them are justified by the uh, right to peaceful enjoyment of property of those people around. So if you want to manifest in some area where people simply leave uh, and they don't want this noise around the houses. So again, there will be a question like what is peaceful assembly, freedom of speech or peaceful enjoyment of property uh, and so forth. So what I'm trying to say here is that uh, if you ask yourself or somebody else, do I have a right? The answer would be, it depends. And it will depend on many particular facts of the situation and the rights of others and uh, the laws and government regulations and municipal regulations and uh, perception of what's reasonable, what's not in the situation and so forth. And of course, at the end, uh, even if you have some right uh, and uh, there is nothing going, nothing like big going against that, but the government, the state, the society might simply, or even a person, for example, you're suing for some person for something, uh, there might be not enough resources there to pay for your right. And then there might be a situation when, well, ideally, do you have a right? Yes, you do. But in practice. So uh, if for you it's just, uh, just some kind of delib deliberation, okay, just keep that in mind uh, until the moment when you see the clash of these rights and limitations in your personal life. If you are already in such a situation, a good idea would be to consult a lawyer. Because uh, very often when like brought up by some school, university teaching, some uh, social media publications, you think that you have absolute right. Well, in reality, it might be that the right is not as absolute as you thought. Thank you and have a nice day.